Hello. Today I'm naked because I'm doing a video on the Sasquatch. Um, better known as Net, uh, better known as Yeti, Bigfoot. Reports, uh, reports, um, whether they're real or not, um, they purportedly live um, generally through British Columbia um, and the Washington State, generally down the uh, range of the Rocky Mountains uh, through Arizona and the like. And they also supposedly live up in the High Earls in the Himalayas through Tibet, China, bits of India. Um, that area. So, I'm going to discuss both sides of the issue to the best of my knowledge and um, my thoughts on it. I'm an agnostic on it, much like I am on extraterrestrials, parapsychology. Um, you know, I say I still figure there's a lot that's worth further research, and that there needs to be there's a lot of questions that need to be answered before we can say definitively one way or the other. Um, but as for Bigfoot, I'm something more of a skeptic than I am for the others. Here's my thoughts. Um, so far, there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of photos, and um, there's been a lot of photo evidence, uh, a lot of supposed footprints. Um, most of this has been debunked by skeptics. Actually, there was one particular skeptic who did a reasonably good job of this uh, here on uh, YouTube. You can find him. It's called uh, Sam. Uh, uh, he's it's a guy called uh, Brian Showwood. He has a 14 uh, uh, p uh, part piece on um, scam sa uh, Sam. Sasquatch, Sasquatch scams and the uh, scams Sasquatch and the supernatural is what it's called. Now, when he covers Sasquatch and Bigfoot, um, he does a fairly good job. I thought there was one particular bit which looked to be more like an ad hominem attack because they were saying that the family came out of the one of the major people who supported Bigfoot and they just revealed that he was a liar and a fraud all his life. You know, so um, you know, I wish there had been more substantiating evidence for that. And um, there were a couple of straw man attacks in the ESP section of his uh, thing. So just bear in mind. Um, if you watch his ESP thing, watch my entire uh, string of videos on parapsychology first and read all the sources I've quoted because uh, that, um, he's one of the uh, of what Ray Hyman quoted as one of the more popular arguments. So anyway, I digress. I digress. Um, okay, my main point on Sasquatch. Um, there are two pieces of information which I thought were um, crucial. They're not proof of Bigfoot and they're not disproof of Bigfoot. Um, well, three actually. One of the most major cases uh, of recent times was done about five years ago. Um, somebody had found uh, what they thought was a giant humanoid rubbing up against a tree uh, here in BC, um, in British Columbia where I live. Um, or was it the Yukon? Oh, bloody hell, I've got to get that news article again. Anyway, uh, somewhere around there, and um, it was like northern BC, like it was northern BC, lower, lower Yukon area. The, the, uh, somebody saw what they thought was a humanoid rub up against a tree. They went to check the tree and found hairs. Um, anyway, when they got it, they did a um, they did a DNA analysis, and it turned out to be the hairs of a bison. So apparently, bison's uh, bison as well as bears can often be mistaken for Sasquatch. So that's something for you cryptozoologists out there to remember. Okay, um, but amongst other court cases which were interesting, there was a case back in the 1990s, maybe thereabouts, 1980s, 1990s, uh, up in a uh, rural. Northern China, I believe it was. Um, somebody saw what they thought was a giant humanoid rubbing up against a tree outside their about outside their house. And when they called in the authorities, they did actually check for that tree for hairs, and they did find hairs of quite a few humanoid species, human included. So it is possible that just maybe multiple people or multiple animals had scratched up against that tree, and one of them was just a very very human hairy human. Um, but the one which I think is the most interesting is the fact that there is, um, and this is the bit which I really, really want to get at when it comes to um, critical thinking in the media. As it happens, uh, a little while back, I talked about a professor at the University of Arizona um, who's currently researching Bigfoot. Uh, he's one of the biologists, um, and he's not very well liked by the rest of his colleagues. I listened to, um, I basically said even before, I actually called in, uh, even before the um, uh, interview had started and said, listen, I hardly think there's that much evidence for Bigfoot and I really don't think it's that big, you know, I don't really think that it's going to be um, that big a deal. Then I heard the interview, and apparently the professor has claimed that they've actually found what they can, what they figure, uh, apparently from the DNA of an unknown species, to be Bigfoot droppings. Now here's the thing, and this is why I consider it worth further research. However, I still don't believe in Bigfoot, but I, but I would like, but I think it's interesting, and I'd like to see some more evidence or research done on this issue. If Bigfoot actually exists, and if that was actually Bigfoot droppings that they found, now I'm just saying a big hypothetical if here, whatever they eat, berries or what have you, 
we do it, like I said, in, in light of the fact that it's only been reported in certain areas of the world. If we could find, if it turned out that this A was Bigfoot droppings, and B, if we could find big, more Bigfoot droppings, like I said, I'd like uh, people, if they could find further research on this, like anything on this, to get, uh, give me info on Bigfoot or what have you, because I'd like to read uh, more into this issue in light of what I've heard. But, um, you know, see where the research could be improved, that, what have you. But that being said, if there were proof, uh, you know, if that were actually Bigfoot droppings, we could see A, what the Bigfoot eats, and secondly, we could, uh, from that, we could then plot where it's more likely, A, that we could spot a Bigfoot, you know, so this way we might be able to narrow it down to see, you know, it might be uh, more able to test for a Bigfoot or, you know, or know where to observe or to set traps or what have you. But B, if we actually did find uh, that there was a Bigfoot, and uh, you know the big uh, Bigfoot existed. We could then track via its droppings roughly where it lives, and from that we could actually see what its impact is on the local ecosystem. I mean, think about it. Um, a humanoid race like that, even if they were eating, they'd only be what a few thousand, maybe maximum. I mean, the human race in general is a collective seven billion people, but uh, chimps, gorillas, and lot and the like are only a few million in number, and they only go off or over a coast of an entire continent. An area, uh, a humanoid race, should they exist, note that I'm saying should they exist, in the Rocky Mountains or, you know, in areas where it's highly wooded and we haven't constantly found them. Maybe the reason that they are so few, again, I'm just putting a hypothetical theory forward, if they exist, they would have to exist less because of the fact that what was the new real estate, etc., that's uh, the land development that's constantly going on throughout BC, um, to going into those areas, there would have to be less and less of a humanoid species because there's le there would be less and less of their ecosystem to support them. Now, th what the odd bit about this is the fact that um, if Bigfoot existed, uh, if the Sasquatch existed, you'd think we'd have found corpses by now as we're constantly encroaching into the existing wild. Unless, of course, you know, them being humanoid intelligent enough, they learned how to bury their dead or what have you, um, you know, and moving on. But here's my thought, and this is just my, th this is the thing, okay? Either way, whether... Um, whether or not Bigfoot exists, it would be a useful thing to check for droppings because we could see how its impact on the ecosystem was should it exist. But two, I think this draws into a bigger issue. We are constantly developing more and more land and trying to um, develop more and more real estate in British Columbia, the Arizona area, you know, in places where the ecosystem is so fragile that it's actually necessary for our local area. You know, it's, it's necessary for the ecological sustainability of our area, for some of these uh, forests, etc. And the fact that we are land developing and not co providing any substitutes is actually having severe effects on our environment. I mean, we're already dealing with a major climate change. We don't need to be cutting down more trees. <laughs> If anything, what we need to be doing is trying to find uh, more suitable ways of resustainabling, uh, sustainabilizing the land, sustaining the land that we have now, and trying to colonize the asteroid belt. So this way, if we do need to move out, we can bring it. We can bring a much more educated population to biodomes and life, um, you know, uh, habitats that we create in lifeless environments, like in the asteroid belt, the moon, Mars, and possibly even the ring, uh, the moons of Jupiter, if we can terraform them later. Anyway, you get my idea. That's my thoughts on Bigfoot. Um, I know it's a little discombobulated. Uh, if you'd like more on it, uh, please message me. Um, please message me with uh, or post comments below with um, sources or any information that you have on Bigfoot that I could go and look up um, on either side of the issue. Thank you. Um, it's one I'm a little. Uh, le I'm, it's one I'm not very familiar on, and I would like more information to research uh, uh, to read on before I made a decision one way or the other, of saying it's more likely or not, like I did with parapsychology after I read everything. Uh, or, or with extrasensory perception and uh, micropsychokinesis. Anywho, that's my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed, and, uh, and um, uh, happy critical thinking, or in the words of Sasquatch, <laughs>